Good afternoon from sunny Western Australia. It's the hot as balls, so I'll keep this as short as I can. Um, I just wanted to get a bit of a video, I guess, walk around of this car. Um, I've been racing my Honda Civic for a couple of years now, um, but it's about to be sold. So I've got one more event uh, in the rally sprint season, that'll be it, before I start trying to build that thing. With that engine sitting in the corner over there. I have too many cars, not enough space, and I wouldn't mind the cash to, to pour into the new Integra. So yeah, let's get a bit of a record of this, so I'll do a bit of a walk around, talk through the car's setup and how it's all worked for me. Starting with the car itself, I bought this uh, just on my 30th birthday, pretty well as it is now, aesthetically and mechanically, um, well, engine wise, but I've done a ton of work to develop it since then, and it's um, gone pretty well. So the car itself is a 1992 Honda Civic EG hatchback. Um, it came in this colour, I think it's kind of a, a mix between some sort of Holden green and a, a Honda green. And apparently it's been owned by a lot of people around uh, Western Australia and over east. Apparently it was put together as a bit of a, a Buddy Club catalogue car, so all the parts on it were from Buddy Club. Um, some of which I've changed out and there's still a bunch left over. Exterior wise, it just has some sort of faded old carbon fibre uh, duckbill wing. Everything else is pretty stock. Some random tail lights there. Still full factory bonnet, bumpers, everything else like that. In terms of wheels, uh, these are Koenig Decagrams. I had to wait eight months to get these in from the United States. Um, they now started importing them into Australia, which is good. But up front, it's a 15 by nine. Um, 15 by 9s are really hard to find because that's a stupidly wide wheel for such a small diameter hence I had to import them um, and that's to fit the tyres that I want to up front so on the fronts at the moment I'm running uh, Advan AO50s and 225 5015 that number is a bit of a misnomer they're actually far wider than a 225 and they really need a 9 inch rim to work properly surprisingly you can actually fit these up front without, without much work all I've really done is roll the crap out of the guards and just spaced them out a little bit at the bottom there. There's plenty of clearance. These have a, a 3.5 offset with a 5mm spacer, so that's plus 30 overall. Uh, that just clears the knuckle on the inside as well as the tie rods. And the steering lock is limited. I've got some little spaces in there from home developments to, to limit that steering lock. Um, and it still does touch on the inside. I've also run uh, Hoosier A7s up front for track work. They are a 245 40 15, um, but they, again, that number's a bit of an underestimate. They actually measured more like 270mm wide, and they're ridiculously wide. Uh, they just fit up front, but they really overpowered the rear of the car. They just had far too much front grip, and it took quite a, quite a few sessions to get used to them, and once they were worn, they were, they were pretty quick. But overall, the, the, the car has a better balance with the AO50s all around, so I use these for rallies for events, as well as all the track work. In the rear, it's the same decagrams. They're a 7.5 inch wide, plus 35 offset, and just running 205 50 15 um, Advan AO50s. I use the soft compound all around. It's a really light car, so it needs, and especially in the rear, you need it as soft as possible so they can warm up. Um, warm up quickly. In terms of engine and drivetrain, uh, the car came with a B18C, which is from the Honda Integra Type R, so that swap had been done. Um, it had headers, the little random carbon fibre intake and a few other bits and pieces on it. Uh, I think it has, I'm told it has cams, Buddy Club Spec 3s, and it's all uh, run by an Apexy Power FC, which is quite an old style ECU, which has a controller that looks a bit like a Game Boy in the cabin. Uh, since I've owned it, I haven't really done much to the engine side of things. I've swapped to a full width radiator. Uh, it gets really hot here in Western Australia, so cooling on track's really important. I've put on a much larger Moroso sump, which is also baffled, so that keeps oil pressure from falling away in the high G corners. And just had a bit of a, a retune from a local tuner to make sure that everything was working correctly. Uh, I think it made 165 horsepower at the wheels, so not much at all but it revs to about 9,000 RPM and sounds amazing and the car certainly does get up and get going. 
Also on the engine bay, hidden in the shadows, I've deleted the brake booster with a home development brake booster delete kit. That was a massive improvement. Um, the pedal feel is fantastic without it, so it's fully manual brakes, it's much harder pedal. You can really hoe into it, um, put your full weight on the pedal, and it's just has the best feel and feedback when you're on track. Um, you want to be right at the edge of locking up all the time, so being able to have that control through your leg is, is important. There's also a bird's nest of brake lines back here, but I've managed to change the way the brake circuits run. So one half the master cylinder runs the fronts, and the other half runs the rear. And you can see a Wilwood adjustable bias valve, so I can dial the rear up or down um, based on the, the grip of the track of the day. In terms of suspension and brakes, uh, it's a pretty basic setup. I'm running Porsche 986 Brembo. They're from a late 90s uh, Porsche Boxster. They match up with a Mini Cooper uh, two, 294mm rotor and an adapter kit from Home Developments to get that to work. They just squeeze under 15 inch wheels, which is good, and they're fantastic calibers. In terms of brake pads, I'm running Winmax 6.5s up front and W3s out the back. Uh, 6.5s have been fantastic. They, they're a tarmac rally pads, so they light on real quick, a couple of corners in, and they're, they're good to go. And they really handle the heat, so like a long track session, they're um, still holding up pretty well by the end of that. For suspension, I'm running MCA Red Series. You might be able to just see them in there. Great coilover, um, Aussie designed, Aussie assembled, really set up to for our conditions here. Um, Spring rates, I'm running 16 kg fronts and 10 kg rears. It's a bit of an in-between of their tarmac setup and circuit setup because the car sees double duty most of the time um, between rally sprints and the track work. They've been working really well. Um, I think it is a little bit undersprung on the front, especially with very high grip tyres on the track. Uh, but overall, they're a great compromise between the two styles of events that I do and have gone really, really well. In terms of handling geometry, I have the full honed uh, roll center correction kit that involves the uh, front bump steer tie rod ends that adjust the bump steer curve of the car, as well as underneath. You should be able to see some extended front ball joints to correct the front roll center. Um, that's been a really good upgrade for the car as well. Uh, very much, very happy with that. Also running as much caster as possible in the car. You can probably see some washers in there which are spacing the lower arm out from the from the rear lower arm. Um, caster makes these things handle very well. They have very little of it from factory and adding some in um, has been a massive help. That dropped like half a second off my lap time just doing that one modification. Moving on to the rear, uh, same thing, MCA Reds coilovers. Just the standard rear brakes from any um, rear disc, disc brake equipped Honda from this era. I think they're two 40mm rotors. And most importantly, the honed rail center correction kit. You can see it just here, that spacing down the rear lower control arm. Uh, that helps a lot for rear roll stiffness. And that's been great uh, in combination with just a crappy eBay sway bar and, and brace across the back. Uh, back of the car has been really good. You can't put much tyre back there, so just a 205. So increasing the amount of rear grip has been great and it really matches the, the big tyres that are around front. In terms of interior, uh, it's completely stripped out. I've still got a floor mat in the passenger, but everything else is gone. Um, running an AGI half cage in the back and everything removed from the back there. Uh, for seats, I have some Australian made Velos. They're really comfortable. Um, Surprisingly more comfortable than most road seats that I've used on long trips. I drive this a couple of hours to some of the racetracks are a bit further away. And then just basics, so a steering wheel and a quick release that's spaced a bit closer to myself. Um, decent gear knob and sort of a, a shifter with decent bushes so you get good feel. And then a cacophony of electronic devices that keep it all running. On the left is the controller for the Apex Power of CFC ECU. It doesn't really do much. I think you can play with the tune, but I'm not going to do that. All it does is tell me the coolant temperature and, and voltage and a few other bits and pieces. In the middle there is a sort of a rip-off Diffy style gauge setup. It's like 14 and 1. 
I run that to um, tell me oil pressure, oil temperature and a few other bits and pieces. It's also got a shift light on it and up on the steering column you can see a little warning light. So once temperatures hit sort of a preset warning level that'll start flashing and beeping at me to let me know I'm getting too hot and to cool down. That's worked amazingly well. Um, such a cheap setup. I think it was $300 all up with including all the sensors. Uh, that's done great. Also in there I've got a GoPro remote so once you're strapped in with the harnesses you cannot move at all so um, I can reach that while I'm strapped in and turn on and off the GoPro as we as we race. For harnesses I'm running a Schroff six point system um, I hide them all out of the way when I'm driving around normally so um, it's all two inch it's designed to work with frontal head restraints so I've got a frontal head restraint and a decent helmet and yeah they're great they yeah really good mechanisms hold you in incredibly well also what I'd like to talk about is these seat mounts so I'm relatively tall I'm about six foot one and this is a pretty small car so when I first got it my head was basically touching the roof when I had a helmet on um, so I got in there and custom designed some seat mounts and had them laser cut and bent Essentially they're side mounts for the seats, but they adapt to the factory locations and there's nothing running underneath the seat, so it can get as low as you want. That's it's very close to touching the floor. I've now got tons of headroom. I think there's about 100mm between my helmet and, this, and the um, headliner once I'm strapped in. And that's great. It's a really good seating position as well. It's, it's kept it. Um, keeps my legs on a really good plane, steering wheel in the right spot, good level of recline. It's just super comfortable to drive. Um, on the road as well as on the racetrack. It's yeah, really good ergonomics. So that's it really. It's a really basic setup. It's been super reliable. I've done 43 events in it so far with basically no issues. You replace the plugs every now and then, do the basic maintenance and it just looks after itself. It can be pretty sad when this does sell. It's been a great introduction to front wheel drive racing and just how quick they are under cornering and braking. Uh, my previous sort of race car was my Evo 7, which is now just a, a street car over there. Much heavier, much more powerful, um, but just not quite as fun to drive. This thing revs to the absolute moon. Uh, sounds amazing while you're doing it, and you just absolutely push it as hard as you can. It's great fun, you're on the throttle all the time, um, just throwing it through corners. It's been really successful. It's, again, it's such a basic setup and has quite low power, but it's managed to set some pretty quick times, beat a lot of cars. It's actually very close to the lap times that I was doing in the Evo uh, which is like 400 horsepower so really good little car I've loved it I'm gonna miss it but the next build of that Integra is going to be uh, a good few levels up and that'll be a lot quicker a lot more of a full-on race car style build proper cage and all the safety gear as well because we're going pretty quick now but yeah much more powerful engine bigger tires better aerodynamics um, but still that same characteristics of very high revving, relatively low power, um, naturally aspirated four cylinder, and just absolutely smashing through the corners and the braking. That's it, catch you later.